Hey guys, my name's Adam and I got these nice standing desk lights for Christmas this year, but I've been using this old Ikea desktop for many years now and it's seen its better days. So in this video, we're gonna be building a new pattern plywood desktop for this desk and it doesn't turn out exactly like you might expect. So I would stick around to the end. Enjoy the video. All right, let's get started in the shop. The first thing I'm gonna do here is to make a test panel just to see what the pattern's gonna look like when all is said and done. I'm going to be trying to make the hexagon pattern of pattern plywood. And you can see a really good tutorial in Michael Alm's video, linked in the description. So I'm not going to go too in depth here. But basically you set the saw at 60 degrees and set the fence exactly the width of the plywood. And then you start cutting these rhombuses right here. Once you get the saw all dialed in, you should be able to put three of them together into this pattern right here. So once I've cut a few strips out, I'm going to start taping them together with this painter's tape, just so the glue up will be a little bit easier. The tape helps keep the edges tight together and makes it so you can just unroll them to glue and then roll them back up afterwards. After all the strips get taped up, I'm going to start liberally applying glue to them and then spreading it all over the entire surface so everything is covered. Then I'm going to use these rubber bands to act as clamps. There's no other good way to clamp them, so these rubber bands apply good pressure radially and usually you can get a pretty good squeeze out over the entire length. I've finished gluing them up and you can kind of get a sneak peek of what the pattern is going to look like. And after they're all dry, all you got to do is remove the rubber bands and the tape. And then the next step is to run them off through the drum sander on all sides to clean them up and remove some of the squeeze out. But keep this drum sander in mind because it'll come back and cause some issues later in the video. And here you go, you can see another sneak peek of the pattern right here. After they're all sanded up, you can cross cut all the pieces next. You can set the thickness however you like, but right now I'm doing about half inch pieces. Then I prep a little board to glue up the test pattern. Just a board with some off cuts at 90 degrees acting as a fence. I sand all the edges of the pieces to get rid of any tear out and then I apply some packing tape to the board to make sure nothing sticks to it. If you want you can apply some paste wax too but I didn't do that this time and it worked alright. Then I just start gluing all the pieces together. You kinda gotta keep an eye on the pattern here because for this pattern to flow right each of the pieces has to be in a very specific orientation. But once it's all dried and sanded, this is what it ends up looking like. And I don't know about you but I really like how this pattern turned out so I think I'm gonna be sticking with it for the final project. Now let's go and uh, cut some more pieces. Now most of this is exactly what you just saw, so I'm not going to be going too in-depth on it, but it's multiplied by about a million, so everything took absolutely forever. After all the sticks got cut out, I cut them all about in half just to make them a little easier to work with. When they're too long, it's easier to get gaps in the glue up and things like that, so it's just easier if you cut them in half. Once all the sticks are cut, it's time to start taping them together. And this is one of the first steps that took absolutely forever, so enjoy. Now, so far all these steps have been done at my makerspace, but now that they're all taped up, I'm going to take them home so I can glue them up there. Alright, now that I got all these hexagons cut and taped up, I'm back here in the comfort of my own garage. Um, please excuse the mess behind me, and I'm going to sit here and watch some TV while I glue up all... I think there's 60 of these strips. So, um, got my rubber bands here, got my paint roller that I'm going to use to apply some glue. Um, and please enjoy this montage. It was probably going to be hours of work. All right, my camera's about to die. I am out of glue and it is well past midnight, so I think I'm done gluing these for now, but I'll get back to them later and uh, finish them up. All right. I <laughs> all right, I finished blowing up all of these and uh, I did it off camera. I figured you didn't need to see another 45 minutes of that. Um, I counted them up, there's 59 of them. So one under the projected 60, I don't know what happened to that last one, but I think 59 will be enough because I included a little bit of wiggle room in the calculations. Some of them were a little bit of a tighter fit than others. So I imagine when I cut them all down, there might be a few with some gaps where um, they might either fall apart or I just, don't want the look of a large gap in the middle of my table. But I'm hoping that including that wiggle room, I'll still have enough pieces. 
and I'm gonna let these dry and then take them to the shop and cut them down. I think they'll probably need a bit of trimming up and obviously I gotta sand all the squeeze out um, and then after that, I'm gonna cut them down into half inch pieces. All right, well, about now is when things started to go wrong in this project. I started sanding them on the drum sander like this, but it turns out that the height of the drum sander really wasn't set correctly. So it's taking too deep of a bite out of some of the sides and not really just evening them up like I wanted. It was basically sanding a millimeter or two deep and turning them into not true hexagons anymore. The result of this was that it was getting difficult to fit them together now and there were some very large gaps between the pieces. I tried a bunch of different methods to try and true them up but unfortunately this happened to about a third of the sticks and there really wasn't much I could do about it. You'll see what I mean in the next shot here. And I'm not sure how well this conveys on video, but basically the edges of these parallelograms should be extending to the very corners of the hexagons. And if they're not, then that means it's not a true hexagon where all the sides are exactly the same length. I'm probably not using the correct terminology on the geometry of these, but basically the sander just sanded too far on some of them and brought them out of true. And on this shot, you can see how even on the side, it extends down the entire way. So where the corner doesn't really go exactly to the corner of the hexagon. So basically what I ended up having to do was just look at each of them and see how distorted they were and see if they would work for this project or if they were rejects. But after I discarded all the bad ones, I just decided to soldier on and continue cutting them down into the pieces that were required for the table. I changed my plan a little bit to make them a bit thinner than I originally intended to try and maximize the number of pieces I would get so I would still have enough. The blade that was on the saw previously was, I believe, a 50 tooth combo blade, so I decided to get an 80 tooth fine finishing blade to reduce some of my tear out issues. And it took forever to cut all these as well, I believe I had to end up cutting around 800 to 900 pieces, so here's another montage of that. Then after all the pieces were cut, I started laying them out to see how much space it would cover and I did some calculations just to see exactly how many I had and how many I would need to have to finish the table. Alright, I'm at my maker space right now and the wood shop's a little loud because there's a couple other people using the equipment in there so I decided to come into the electronics lab so we could have a little chat because there's something I need to tell you. Because I had to throw away about 15 or so of those strips of hexagon, I had 45 or so strips left, cut them down, and counted them up, and it turns out that I only have around 832 of them. I'm supposed to have around 1,200 of them. So there's a pretty big gap there, around 360-something hexagons that I'm missing. And there's a couple options, at least that I can think of. One is go buy more plywood and try to make more hexagons. Overall, I think that's kind of a bad idea. So I have another idea. I have another project that I've been wanting to make that involves a mirror and some power carving and some Baltic birch plywood. And I think I can repurpose these hexagons to be used on that project instead of this one. And I think uh, it could be pretty cool because regular Baltic birch plywood that I was gonna use on this project, it would've looked cool, I think, but this pattern plywood could add that sort of next level of uniqueness. And so I think this video is gonna change a little bit. I think you came in here thinking you were gonna watch me make a desk, but I think I'm actually gonna be making a power carved mirror, so follow along and, you know, let's hope this turns out well. And we're just rolling with the punches at this point, so we'll see what happens. All right, yeah, so major change of plans. We're not gonna be building a desk anymore. We're gonna be building a mirror. So right now I'm just sanding the edges and I prepared this board, which is gonna serve as a template for the mirror. I drew on lines where I'm gonna need the hexagons and where I'm not gonna need them to sort of minimize how many I would use. And then I got to gluing. Now the frame for this mirror, I want it to be about an inch and a half thick instead of the half inch that these pieces are. And if I had this plan in the first place, I would have just cut them to be an inch and a half thick. But because I'm sort of flailing now and just trying to make this work, I had to make three of these glue ups, which took forever and wasn't a very fun process, but you know, it makes for pretty cool video content. And 
and this seems like a pretty good time to ask. If you've made it this far in the video and you're liking it, I would really appreciate it if you wanted to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more stuff like this. I'm just starting my channel, but I hope to continue making cool stuff and your support would mean a lot. Now, once all the panels were glued up, I ran them through the drum sander again, and fortunately didn't have a similar issue this time. I used some wood filler to fill in some of the major gaps, but a lot of them would be hidden because they'd end up in the middle of the mirror and not on the outside, so I wasn't too worried about it. After I sanded them down, I glued up all three of the panels into one solid blank. this glue up I maybe went a bit overboard on the clamps, but you can never have too many clamps, right? The squeeze out for this panel was a bit interesting as the glue seemed to find every little nook and cranny in the panel, so you got a bunch of these little globs on the surface. Once I got the glue up rough sanded, I CNC cut a profile of the mirror outline so I could make sure it would fit right and so we could get a sneak peek of it. Then I applied this painter's tape to one side so I could super glue it to the CNC bed and get it to be held down pretty well. Then I just ran the same profile to cut the rough shape of the mirror out of it. And then while it was still stuck to the CNC bed, I ended up flattening the back and cutting a recess for where the mirror itself was going to sit as well. And then right after that, I took the mirror that I'm going to be using for this project and used my glass cutting tools to start cutting it into a rough shape so that I could see what the final product might end up looking like. This is just a mirror I got from Goodwill for like 10 bucks, and it was stuck to a particle board on the back that I had to painstakingly scrape off. So I got off as much as I could, but there's still some glue on it from its old mounting that you'll see. I didn't think it was too big of a deal because while it was on the wall, you're never going to see it. Just wanted to say that in case you see it later on and you're wondering what that is. But scoring and breaking this mirror was a very satisfying process, I will say. But before you get to see the mirror, I had to power carve the frame. So this is my first time power carving anything, and I used a cut saw coarse grinding disc on my angle grinder. It provided a pretty rough surface finish, but after sanding I thought it turned out pretty well and it looked great, so I'd definitely recommend these cut saw discs. I'll put a link in the description if you want to grab any of the tools I use for this project. I kind of sped through that power carving section, but after it was done being power carved I had to sand it a bunch anyways, so here you can get some good views of what it looked like afterwards. I made sure to use some water to pop the grain and I finished sanding it up to a 220 grit surface finish. Alright, we finally got this sanded up to 220 grit, which should be plenty for this plywood and we're on to my favorite step which is finishing. We're going to be using this General Finishes oil based armor seal semi gloss finish, um, which I've had good results with in the past and we're going to be applying it with this. 3M final finishing pad, which is basically just a non-abrasive um, pad that's, well, it's abrasive enough to give it a good buff, but it's not abrasive enough to scratch the surface, and I've used this in the past too and gotten great results. And then after that, I'm going to be attaching the mirror to the wood with this Liquid Nails Fuse It, which is just a random construction adhesive I found at Lowe's that says it's good on glass, so we'll be testing that out. Alright, let's get to it. Alright, I'm going to do the other side and then I'm going to use some of these leftover bits to uh, prop it up just so that the underside can dry at the same time. Alright, I got a couple coats of this armor seal on there. Um, 
it's been a couple days, so it's all dry. I'm not totally loving the top cut, so I think I'm gonna hit it with this shellac, spray on shellac beforehand, just to give it a little bit more shine and color. Um, and I'll see you after that. All right, now that the shellac is dry, I'm gonna take the mirror, rough it up with a little bit of sandpaper, then take this glue and glue it all together. And then uh, hopefully we'll be pretty close to done. Just gotta do this so that the uh, glue has a better uh, purchase on the mirror itself. This glue says it's good for glass, but you know, with such a smooth surface, you can never really trust it. So hopefully this makes it stick a little bit better. All right, so I'm gonna put a thin bead around the whole perimeter, but uh, not enough that there's gonna be any squeeze out or anything like that. for watching to the end of the video and don't forget to subscribe. I'll eventually make that desk, I promise.